Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, I am back to work on the Monarch lathe again. Uh, still working on scraping this thing in. When we left off on the last video, I was having some difficulty with my gib where I was having some play in here. Uh, well, since then, I have spent some time over here really studying this thing and doing some measuring. And I got some good news and I got some bad news as far as what we're gonna have to do. So let me zoom you in over here, kind of get you up to speed of where we're at and uh, tell you what the game plan is gonna be. When we left off, I was putting the give in here, and when I was doing that, we were going up against uh, the stop in the front and the back and kind of getting it snug, and we were getting some side-to-side -side shift in the part. And I think I was measuring about 12 thousandths or so, 12 to 15 thousandths in there. I came back and really started looking at this because it did not make sense to me why the angle on the gib would change uh, like it, it appeared like it had. And, and I realized that um, I was making a mistake. And uh, basically what had happened is, is I had, I, when I started scraping in, I'd kind of preset the back of the gib back here by putting the, the screw in the back and that was kind of stopping how far it would go in. And uh, then I was snugging it up on the other side when I was doing all my scraping work. Well, unbeknownst to me, and I'm not exactly sure how I did this, but that's irrelevant. The gib was not in as far as it needed to be. And I had some slop in there uh, just naturally because it wasn't, it wasn't all the way in. And when I tightened the front one up on here, what was happening is, is the screw pressure was actually pushing this in tight. But on the back side, I had all that slop in there. And when I took all the screws out, this is, this is kind of where I figured out what the problem was. You know, I came in here and I said, I'm just going to pull this thing all the way out. And I don't know if you can see that or not. But when I do, the gib is actually coming out the back back here. Let me change my camera where you can see that. So you can see the tail end of the gib is actually sticking out the back. See there? So when the, when the gib is in there tight, it's coming out the back a little bit. And that, that makes better sense to me because, we you know, when we worked on this before, we actually milled the dovetail in here. And uh, by removing that metal, we made this thinner, uh, which means we should need to give this a little bit thicker. Now, what I did, and I did all this off camera, is, is we got in here and we figured out about where the give need to be, be at. I added some shims. These are literally just uh, pieces out of my feeder gauge set. I put them on the front and the back, and I was able to determine that I need the, the, the gib to be about 20 thousandths thicker than what it is right now. Now, as far as the taper goes, um, it does appear that there is still a little bit of a taper in here, but it's much more reasonable now. It was about 3 thousandths of an inch. So uh, basically it's tight on this side, it's almost tight on this side, but I can take about a 3 thousandths feeler gauge and I can manage to get it in back there to get it as tight as I think it is on the other side. So uh, it is a little bit of taper, but you know, 3 thousandths, that's not too bad. In fact, you can scrape that out and that's more in line with what I would expect uh, to be, maybe have some stuff just from the scraping that's gone on in here uh, on the other side of this piece. When we, when we cleaned it up to get it in there, we very well could have shifted geometry a little bit uh, to account for that little bit of an error. But the 15 thousandths that we were seeing before just did not make any sense. So that's my problem uh, is that after removing the material in here, uh, we basically need to add some thickness to our gib. So there you go. Uh, there you see what the problem is. We need a gib that's 20 thousandths thicker than what this one is. There's a couple of ways we could go about it. You know, probably the easiest thing to do would be to just order some shim stock. I could get like some brass shim stock and put it on the back side of this. That would widen it out and it'd solve the problem. It'd be quick and easy, uh, but honestly, I just, I'm not crazy about doing the shim thing. Uh, it's just, it, it would work. There's plenty of ladies out there that have had that done, but uh, I'm just, anyway, I'm just not crazy about that. You know, another option is, is we could put turkite on the uh, movable side of, of the gib and thicken it up. So the only issue I've got with that is, is the turkite that I have is about 42 thousandths thick. 
Uh, I need 20 thousandths thick in my thicker material, thicker gib, which means I'd have to mill or grind 22 thousandths off of this. And I'm just afraid that by the time I take 20 more thousandths off than what I got now, that the thin end of this is going to be getting a little bit thinner than what I want it to be. And uh, again, I'm just not too crazy about that. I could put some thinner turkite. I could get some 20 thousandths turkite or something close to it. Uh, I just don't have any. And when you start pricing turkite, it's expensive material. Even for just a little piece like this, I'd have to, it, I was doing some quick looking and I mean, it's, it, by the time I pay shipping and everything else, I'm easily gonna have a hundred bucks just in a piece of turkite. Um, not a bad option, but um, I, I think what I'm gonna do though, is I think I'm just gonna make a new gib altogether and have it to the correct thickness, have it all cast iron. That way we'll have cast iron on both sides of the gib surfaces. We'll have turkite on the bottom, which is fine. But uh, I just kind of like the idea of making a new gib. So that's my game plan. Now, the gib is made out of cast iron. You won't, on these mating surfaces that are rubbing against each other, you won't cast iron on cast iron. You don't want steel on one of them. In fact, I had a question recently come up asking about what material to make a gib from. And the answer is, is you make your gib from cast iron because you, you just, that's just the right material to use. Uh, fortunately, I've got a piece of a durabar here. This is uh, cast iron. Basically, it's an extruded cast iron. And uh, I basically cut me out a little piece on the bandsaw. So I got a chunk of cast iron that we can make a new gib from. Got a lot of material here. We're going to have to do a lot of uh, material removal. Uh, but I think that's going to be the content of this video is we're going to be making a new gib uh, to fit on the lathe. So with all of that, let's start designing a new gib. I've gone to put my big Wilton vise on here. This is a little bit wider than my Kurt vise that I normally run on this uh, mill. This is just a heavier vise, but because of the length of this, I didn't really want all this extra material kind of hanging out over the jaws on the, on the narrower vise. Uh, we've got a shell mill in here. This is a brand spanking new kind of metal shell mill that was uh, uh, given to me by one of my viewers. So I'm uh, kind of excited to try that out for the first time. Uh, actually, this vise here was a viewer gift a while back from a gentleman down in uh, Valdosta, Georgia with the Air Force down there, or I think he's overseas now if I remember right. But anyway, we're gonna be trying out some new tools here. So let's fire up the mill. Right now, my goal is I just wanna get one side of this flat. Um, and this is the roughest side, so I've got it up. And we'll flip it over and we'll get a, a side uh, as close to perpendicular to it as we can. We'll grind it in later. I got my good side to the back now, so we're gonna go ahead and square the top off on this. I'm just gonna make a real light pass across here. I just, again, making sure I'm not gonna crash my cutter anywhere. I touched down on the other side and then just raised it up, or actually lowered the table down just a fuzz. And you can see it was just touching a little bit over here. I'm just gonna go about 30 thousandths on my depth. I'm gonna roll across. Looks like it's thicker on this side than this side, but that's fine because I'm sure the bottom isn't parallel. It's just all bandsawed cuts on there. But uh, as long as we clean up, we should be good and it looks like we're going to. All right, looks like it's cleaned up the whole way. Man, I'm really impressed with the purpose this uh, base mill's given. Like I said, it's a lot better than anything I've gotten out of any of my other face mills. 
And I'm sure it's just, again, quality. That kind of metal stuff is good stuff. And most of the ones I have were either used, bought off of eBay, which means they were probably crashed at some point in time, or uh, cheap ones that I bought or something like that. So I'm um, anyway, real happy with this kind of metal. All right, side three here. I'm just gonna, again, just try to clean it up right now. So um, we're gonna just take, again, about 30 thou. Cut back across there. All right, we got our last face here, and you know, measured the thickness in this direction, and you know, it, it's a little bit thicker than what we need, but it's, it's close, um, and we still got some material to remove, so I'm not worried about that. We're going to put the uh, the the bevels on that side. Now, then, in this direction, right now, even before I take this off, we're measuring a little over seven hundred thousandths. The total thickness of the gib is only about 400, well, let's say 420, because we how much we need to add on to that end down there. So, you know, 450, I'll probably take it down to about a half inch right now, and then we'll uh, get it milled down to the correct thickness later on. So we're gonna take several passes on this. I won't show all of that, but uh, anyway, we're gonna get it down to about a half inch thick. All right, guys, we're making progress here. Here's our blank back here. And, you know, it's still a little bit thick, but that's fine. I, I want to have some material on here to deal with right now. And, uh, but next step here is I need to get the taper milled on this side over here. So now that we got a pretty square piece, we want to start working on getting the taper. And, you know, yeah, I could do that all on the surface grinder, but that's a lot of grinding. I want to take as much of this off with the milling machine as I can. And the question is, is, all right, how do I get that angle? I'm going to have to hold this piece in my vise at this weird angle to do that. So what I really need is a tapered shim to go up underneath this thing. Hmm, I wonder what I can use as a tapered shim. So I'm going to put a couple of spacers in here in the back of the vise. We're going to take the gib, put it in there, and we'll take the new gib, put it on top of there, and voila, I have the perfect angle, or it's at least something pretty darn close to it. And like I've said before, we're going to finish this job on the surface grinder. So right now, I'm just trying to get it down close to size, or get it rough down to a rough dimension. So we're definitely gripping it more on this end. I am catching a little bit up here, and of course it's catching it more as it goes down. I'm gonna probably be a little bit less aggressive on my depth of cut on this, just because I don't like this. I don't really have as much grip down here as I would like to, uh, but I think this will work. <coughs> Make sure we're seated down good, and we'll tighten this up good. Get our cutter kind of touched off over here. We'll just bring it down until it kisses right there. Lock my quill. <coughs> and again, I think I'm going to start with 25,000 step to cut. Yeah, it's going to take me a little while to get there, but I would just rather play it on the safe side and not risk tearing this thing out of my, my vise. So uh, let me dial in 25 on my depth and let's cut on across it. Do another 25. I'm just feeding this by hand. This should be the last pass. Hopefully you can see the taper going through there. And uh, I'm gonna leave this in down here plenty thick enough because we're gonna be doing some more work to this. Don't wanna get it too thin. 
But uh, let's go ahead and cut across. I'm only taking about 20 thousandths on this last pass. But uh, this so far has turned out pretty nice. Using that uh, gib as a shim has done just a trick, it looks like. So uh, anyway, let's get this one cut and we'll uh, be ready for our next step. There we go, we got our rough um, angle on here. I got the old gib up next to it. And it is a little bit thick right now, but I want that material in there. Like I said, we're gonna finish this on the surface grinder. So that gives me uh, some material there uh, to still work with. And it is a little bit long. I did that purposely too, so that I can start off, you know, getting my down here. I'm gonna have to cut this to length, but having that extra in there just gives me a little more wiggle room uh, while I'm getting this to size. Once I get the wedge to fit just right, we'll cut it off to the proper length.